On an unusual day, a woman, who believed she was entitled, decided to take possession of my car keys. She insisted that I, for some reason, couldn't be the owner of the vehicle. As a consequence of her actions, she ended up being detained and sentenced to serve time. I'll tell you what happened, as this episode was so absurd that I feel the need to share it, especially because my friends keep insisting on it. The most ironic thing is that my car was nothing out of the ordinary. It was a 2009 yellow Chevy Camaro with black stripes, acquired at an affordable price due to damage to the passenger door and its 130,000 miles on the clock. Still, the title was in order, which was a mystery to me, but not something that really bothered me. All that mattered was that the car seemed like a good deal. So, a friend who works in bodywork repaired it for me. He told me that most of the damage was on the door and that a new one would suffice after some adjustments. We found a door of the same color at a junkyard, and the car looked almost new. It became my preferred mode of transportation for work or for a stroll when I didn't want to use my other car. I didn't make any modifications. I'm not one of those speed enthusiasts or into extravagant modifications. I like the car for its style and reasonable fuel consumption of a V6 engine. In fact, I chose a Camaro V6 because I heard they're usually better cared for than the V8, as many prefer the V6 more for aesthetics than power. I drove this Camaro for a year until a bizarre incident occurred at a supermarket last September. These establishments often attract peculiar figures, especially in the state where I live. I had seen many strange types before, but I was almost never the target. That day, I was buying ingredients for dinner and was about to head home when I found a woman and her child inside my car. The boy, who looked about four years old, was sitting on the hood while his mother took pictures of him smiling and saying, Bumblebee. Yes, I got the reference to the Transformers movie. I don't like people messing with my stuff, so I politely asked the boy to get down. The woman, whom I'll call Karen, looked at me and said I should mind my own business. At 29, but with a youthful appearance and dressed casually, perhaps I seemed too young to own such a nice car. I asked her to get out of my Camaro, but she retorted, saying there was no chance the car was mine because I was too young. So, I grabbed my keys and activated the car alarm with the remote. The sound startled her son, who started crying. Instead of comforting the child, Karen came at me angrily and pushed me so hard that I fell. What happened next is a bit blurry. I took a blow to the head, and while Karen was screaming incoherent words, she stepped on my arm and snatched the keys from my hand before I could react. Although the incident didn't cause me major injuries, the woman in question wasn't of great stature, measuring approximately 5 feet. I, on the other hand, am about 6 feet tall and weigh over 150 pounds. As I got up, I saw her calming her crying son down, convincing him that I was a bad person. I demanded she give me back the keys, but she got angry, insisting that the Camaro wasn't mine. I reaffirmed that the car was indeed mine and asked for the keys again. However, she refused to return them and handed them to her son, who started playing with the remote, unlocking the car doors. Tired of the situation, I grabbed my phone and called the police. When the woman, whom I'll call Karen, realized I was on the phone, she started screaming and attacking me again. This time, I managed to easily dodge, and she almost fell to the ground. Still, she accused me of assaulting her, which wasn't true. I made it clear to the 911 operator that she was hearing everything and quickly informed our location. As Karen continued to scream, two police cars arrived. She then locked herself in my car with her son and started the engine to turn on the air conditioning. I explained the situation to the officers, who knocked on the Camaro's window for Karen to come out and give her version of the events. She claimed the car was hers and that I was a foolish teenager trying to steal it. In front of the police, she boasted about pushing me admitting to the assault. The officer asked me if she had really pushed me, and she confirmed without hesitation. I instructed the officer to check the glove compartment, where my insurance card and a copy of the vehicle registration were located, which could be compared with the name on my driver's license to prove my ownership. Upon hearing this, Karen exited the car and finally admitted that it wasn't hers, but she insisted that it couldn't be mine either and that she had taken the keys to find the real owner. This resulted in her arrest and she was taken handcuffed to the police station. The parking lot had cameras, which made it easy to prove the assault. Although I only had scratches, a bruise on my arm, and a small bump on my head, 
Karen was taken to the station and it was discovered that she was under the influence of substances, which explained her erratic behavior. I filed a complaint, although it wasn't really necessary, as the police had the security camera footage and the audio from my call to prove her guilt. This was Karen's third offense, and she was sentenced to two years in prison. The whole incident made me reconsider owning the Camaro. In the end, I decided to sell it and managed to recoup the investment. After all the confusion with Karen, I doubt I'll ever want to buy another sports car. This absurd situation is something I still have difficulty believing, especially the fact that Karen tried to steal my car. The lady in question verbally attacked the post creator, usurped his vehicle, and tried to justify that she was the owner. Now, what kind of strategy is that? Surely, it wouldn't fool the authorities. The police wouldn't accept such a claim without further investigation. They would check the documents, making sure everything was as expected. But the woman thought that by claiming it was hers, she could escape a disastrous situation. Especially because the owner had to sell the car to avoid troubles, as the vehicle, quite popular and desired, attracted unwanted attention. I understand his point of view. Sometimes, we just want to enjoy our possessions in peace. It's satisfying to see someone like this, Karen, getting what she deserves. After repeated offenses, imprisonment seems to be the only solution to stop her. I hope now the owner can drive peacefully, without having to deal with insane people trying to subdue him or steal his car. As for the smoothie incident, I regret the oversight. I make this drink almost every day with similar ingredients. Frozen fruits, juice, yogurt, ice, and protein powder. However, today, in a rush to get back to an online game, I ended up making a mistake. At the bottom of the protein container, the measuring spoon ended up in the blender. Initially, I thought it was just ice making noise, but after insisting and finally drinking the smoothie, I noticed strange pieces in the mixture. At first, I didn't think much of it, but upon inspection, I realized the spoon had gone missing. Incredibly, I didn't realize I was shredding plastic until I was almost finished with the drink. A quick search reassured me about my health. Honestly, it's surprising that I didn't notice it earlier, and I feel somewhat foolish for it. I'm relieved it wasn't something dangerous that I accidentally dropped into my smoothie. Given my distraction, it could have been anything. I imagine that, in a way, this is the most effective way to get rid of something unwanted. Simply blend it into the smoothie, as apparently, I don't even notice. It's funny to think you need to be more mindful in life when you can't even taste the plastic in your smoothie. It probably didn't taste like anything, just crunchy bits, as he suggested. Must be ice, he said, but deep down, he must have set a world record for the fastest consumption of microplastics. Jokes aside, I hope he's okay and doesn't suffer any negative consequences later, if you catch my drift. I imagine the experience could be quite unpleasant, and I hope it doesn't cause any harm. So, I wish good luck to the original poster. It seems like you'll need it today. Recently, I made a mistake by taking a joke too far, which may have affected some relationships, and I'm uncertain about how to proceed. Let me explain. I started a new job last month and moved to the other side of the state. On the first day of orientation, I met a colleague whom I'll call Sarah, not her real name. She was also new there, and I immediately found her charming, so I decided to get to know her better. I found out that she had recently moved to the state to work and, just like me, didn't know anyone in the area. We started talking, got along well, and quickly became friends. We hung out and had fun together. One day, I tried to ask her out, but then I found out she had been in a long-distance relationship for almost two years. I was disappointed, of course, but I really enjoyed her company and conversations, so I asked if we could still be friends, which she happily agreed to. During one of our conversations, I found out she wanted to play Stardew Valley, an excellent game, by the way. She struggled with the game mechanics, so I helped her play in cooperative mode and understand the game better. For those unfamiliar with Stardew Valley, you develop relationships with non-playable characters, NPCs, by giving them gifts, and each has their preferences. She got frustrated, saying the characters should be happy to receive any gift. This inspired me to make a joke, saying that, Following that logic, she should be happy with a random gift, like a potato. I promised I would give her one the next day. Keeping my word, I showed up at work with a potato for her, which made her laugh a lot. I wish the story ended there, but if that were the case, I wouldn't be sharing this now. 
It all started to get out of control. The next day, Sarah's mother came to visit her for the weekend, thinking it would be fun. I decided to leave a potato in her apartment. I put it in an empty Amazon bag with a heart drawn on a piece of paper and left it at the door while they were out. When they returned, Sarah found the delivery. And I believe she understood the joke, as we share a similar sense of humor. However, her mother misunderstood the heart, accusing Sarah of infidelity. Immediately, I apologized for going too far and causing a misunderstanding. Sarah reassured me by saying that she had cleared everything up with her mother. So, I thought everything was okay. But last night and today, I noticed a change in Sarah's messages, which became short and terse. This seemed strange to me, so I asked if she was okay. She replied that it wasn't a good time and that she was still upset about the incident over the weekend. As far as I knew, she had found the joke funny. So I was surprised to learn that she was genuinely irritated. This morning, Sarah asked for space and requested that I not send messages for a while. This disappointed me because she had become a close friend in an area where I know few people. Now, I fear I may have lost her as a friend for taking the joke too far. Considering this, reflecting on a friendship that I unintentionally complicated, I realized that the situation may have affected her romantic relationship. Initially, my intention was just to make an innocent joke, but now I see that perhaps I crossed the line. Some may see this as flirting, not just a joke. She knew about my previous interest, and we had a good friendship, but now I understand that the potato with a heart may have been interpreted differently by her mother and her boyfriend. There's a lot of ambiguity in this situation. If you were in my shoes, what would you do? Does the girlfriend have the right to be upset? Is the boyfriend causing problems that I'm unaware of? Leave a comment with your opinion. I'd love to know what you think. My beloved's former partner is someone he thought about marrying, which makes me wonder if I'm just an alternative for him. We've been together for a year and a half. He is my first great love and my first serious relationship. He treats me well, and although we're not perfect, our love is strong, and we're dedicated to keeping our relationship healthy and affectionate. I moved to this city because of work, and now he's moving here to be with me, even though we're two hours apart. Before me, he had two significant relationships. The first was with his first love, with whom he was for almost five years. She supported him after the loss of a loved one, but then she cheated on him, and they broke up. They got back together for another six months, planned a trip to Europe, and even bought rings for a possible engagement. However, she decided to explore other relationships, leading to a definitive breakup. His second serious relationship ended when the girl left him for someone she met online, and they got engaged two months later. I hate betrayal and would never do what they did to him. I love this man and want to share my life with him. However, I'm worried that he's still stuck in the past with his ex, which prevents me from being fully happy. I constantly compare myself to her and to the carefree time they had together. He says he wants to marry me, but wants to wait until he's emotionally and financially ready. This makes me wonder if he really cares about me as he did about her, and if he'll ever be ready. I'm still young and willing to wait, but I fear I might just be convenient for him and never able to overcome the past he had with her. Recently, he even mentioned that we probably get along well, which only increased my insecurity of being a second choice. Why is she still being mentioned? I love him deeply and don't know if my anxiety is justified. Am I right to be worried? If not, how do I overcome this jealousy of the past? What should I do? It seems like you're very anxious about this situation, Worrying about a past relationship is futile, as that phase of his life has already ended. He loves you, and wants to marry you. Saying that you're just a secondary option isn't true, you're his choice now. It's understandable to feel unfairly compared to someone's ex remember that you are unique and that's valuable. Your partner chose to be with you for who you are and what they see in you. Something so special that they consider spending their life with you. Don't overly concern yourself with this comparison it has no basis. A frank conversation can clarify your doubts and reaffirm the love your partner feels for you. Discovering the existence of secret siblings can be unsettling and deeply affect your relationship with your father. Learning that your parents had twins before you were born and gave them up for adoption naturally brings up many emotions. It's positive that one of your sisters wants to reconnect and build bonds with the family, even if the other is still dealing with adoption issues. Regarding your father, 
it seems there was excessive rigidity during your upbringing, which may have left marks. While you weren't a problematic teenager and have achieved professional success, revelations about your father's past and how he treats you and your sisters can be difficult to accept. It's important to acknowledge your feelings and find a way to deal with this situation, whether through dialogue or seeking appropriate emotional support. He seems to lack the self-awareness needed to understand his actions or the negative impact they may have on my new relationship with my sister. Currently, his presence is something that makes me uncomfortable and I confess that I hate the moments we spend together. Therefore, I have sought to reduce the time I spend with him. However, he is already 70 years old and I feel like time is running out. I don't want to hold grudges when he's no longer here. I wish to have a constructive dialogue about how painful his attitude has been, hoping that we can resolve this situation. I have faced feelings of resentment and would appreciate advice on how to start this difficult conversation. I'm about to start therapy next Tuesday, but until then, I feel lost about how to act. I believe you articulated your feelings and perspectives clearly and directly, highlighting what you appreciate and what you don't tolerate. It's evident that his attention to this newly discovered sister while he continues to belittle you whenever possible, is a toxic dynamic. I think the most important thing is to be prepared to express your truth, regardless of his reaction. If he continues to reject and belittle you, treating you disrespectfully, perhaps it's time to move on and distance yourself, as no one deserves to be treated like that, regardless of age. I'm sorry you're going through this and sincerely hope the situation improves. Thank you for sharing your story. When you subscribe, don't forget to activate notifications by clicking on the bell icon. To listen to all stories, use the playlist available in the description.